Hey everyone, today we're talking about the Arizona Coyotes and the season preview for the 2021, the 2022 season. Now this team is a, of course we found out, a rebuilding team for this year. So we'll see how things go, and yeah, kind of, cup, you know, we'll see how this rebuild goes. But first year of the rebuild, they try to do something here, it just hasn't worked out. Uh, Bill Armstrong, GM of the Coyotes, took over last year. So alright, let's we'll see how this team does. Still mediocre. Try to make the playoffs. They don't. They were close, but they weren't close. Like, all right, time for the tail down. Let's go for it. Let's change up this team. Let's change up the core. Let's change up everything. We need young players and you know, really change this to make this a winning culture. Now, before we get into the forwards, defense, and goalies and prediction of what's going to happen and my thoughts on all the players here, let's get into the top prospects we have for the Coyotes. Now, the Coyotes are starting to now build up the prospect pool. It's still a little on the lighter side, like, oh, okay. Uh, but this team will have a lot of prospects in the next couple of years for sure. Looking into next year, three first-round picks. Uh, potential Montreal, Carolina. It's looking like Mo Montreal's. Uh, before the season starts, right? Um, and then you have also Colorado's, and they have their own. So that's three in the first round on a 2022 draft, which is supposed to be stacked. You know, you have Shane Wright, Brad Lambert. You have some guys here that you could really do some good stuff with, right? So we'll see what happens. So let's get into the top prospects. Victor Soderstrom's one of them. Top defenseman there on the right side. Played in the AHL last year. Played not bad. He could get a shot at the NHL. See what he does. He could crack the lineup. You just look at the defense seal and you're just like, yeah. He can make the lineup. Absolutely. You also have Janik, who is another um, player. He's plays on the right side. Um, I mean, right ringer. You know, take his time. You know, he's 20, 21. And, you know, this is a rebuilding team. If he needs a little bit more time, give it to him. This is no pressure for him to become the guy. You know, really, this is a team that has low pressure for anything. So, take your time with him. Do what you have to do to make him good. Same thing with Matt Shelley here. Um, same one with him, too. I don't know how to say his name. But um, he's another guy. Take your time with him, for sure. He's 20, 21. Has great talent, both of those guys. Uh, we'll see how he does, for sure. And you have Cam Dean, a defenseman. Uh, he could definitely make the lineup, kind of like Shoulderstrom. Uh, both of them could make the lineup for sure. Uh, but two good defensemen for sure, adding them to the lineup. Then you have also Ferrocini, who's a center. Uh, has some talent. I don't know he's playing, I think, the AHL next year. Um, he's 2021. 20, See what he does next year. If he's really good, bring him up. We'll see what happens for sure. And he had Pulsevev, whatever you say his name. I didn't hear how you say his name last year. He did play some games uh, with the Coyotes. Of course, Kemper and Ronto were hurt a bunch of times this season. So we had a couple of times to get tried out. And all, um, of course, Aiden Hill was there too, but which isn't anymore. But um, he has a good shot making the team. Also, Dylan Gunther is the guy they... Drafted ninth overall, and that big trade for Vancouver to give him that ninth overall pick to bring on all these junky players with the cap hits. So let's get into that. Um, so those are the top prospects that will grow, get even better as a prospect pool, which that's what you want. But Dylan Gunther gained that offensive wing Um, the first year of the rebuild is perfect for sure. Getting to the forwards, some left. This is not lineups, um, but this is how we got some players here on the left side. You have Kane Kello, uh, Lawson Krause, Dmitry Jaskin, Andrew Ladd, and Anton Roussel. Those are your left wingers. You know, not really stacked as much. Kello's a puck moving, uh, you know, playmaker there on the left side. Krause, you know, we'll see how he does. I know he was picked in 2015 by the Panthers, got traded to the Coyotes. But, um, you know, you'll probably get your 20, 30 points. Keep growing for sure. He's like 25 now, so uh, we'll see how he does. Jaskin just came back from the KHL. Um, we'll see how he turns out. See how he does this year. I think he'll be pretty solid. Angel Ladd was the one that the Islanders gave to the Coyotes. Uh, for taking on this cap hit, the Coyotes did that. $5 bucks or 5.5. 
On the Coyotes, we see a second, third round pick, conditional there. Get those picks, like I'm saying. Build that prospect pool. Uh, that's exactly what they're doing. Take on bad contracts to get picks. You don't take on these bad contracts for nothing. You get picks, right? You get first round picks, second, third, all these types of picks. Add them to your team. Absolutely. And they have done a lot of that this year. Another one talking about that is Anton Roussel, um, Jay Beagle, Louis Erickson on defense, Jane Gossespail. Some guys here you really have added um, in trade to get these picks that you want, for sure. And Anton Roussel, you know, he's $3 million for another year. Um, Lad, I think he has two more years. Or he has one more year, I'm not sure. At the top of my head, I'll look and see what he is. I wasn't sure. Um, but, you know, you have these guys who are junkie, but you get picks. That's what you want. Um, two years for a lad. Of course, one year for a beagle. Um, beagle, let's see, Louis Erickson, Anton Roussel. So those three guys from Vancouver formerly. Have one year left. So six million off the books, three million off the books, and another three. So that's six, nine, that's about twelve million off the books. Um, not bad. And you know what? They don't need it. they're not tight on cap heel. Um, you know, it's not any type crunch cap crunch here whatsoever for them for the next couple of years at least. So this team's really you know, just add those picks like I said. Looking down the middle, you have Nick Schmoltz, Johanna Lawson, Jay Beagle, Travis Boyd, and Barrett Hayden. Now, talking about Barrett Hayden here, he's a guy who can make that second-line spot. On At center, he's a big guy, tough guy, um, was really good in the combine when he was drafted. Um, just a good, solid two-way guy. You know, they're really taking his time with him. You know, that should be number one or number two center. In the future, depending if the Coyotes in the future can get like a Shane Wright, Connor Bernard, uh, Brad Lambert type of guy. Um, but if not, he might be the first line center. We'll see. First or second line would be nice to see Barrett Hayden as in the future for sure. But keep growing him. Uh, don't rush him. Like I said, absolutely don't. Uh, Jay Beagle, he'll be getting the time. Uh, Johan Lawson's going to get time. He'll Schmaltz is definitely the clear cut right now. This season, the number one center. He's a solid player. Um, I think eventually they'll move on from him, but he has a lot of term on his deal still, so he'll be staying for sure. Um, but Boyd, fourth line center, he was moved around a lot this year. Um, not only twice with the Leafs and the Canucks, um, off waivers by the Canucks, um, but except that, you know, just a solid fourth line option. Look on the right side, you have Phil Kessel, Ryan Dezingle, Christian Fischel, O'Brien, and then you have Louis Erickson, Spears, and Gunther. Um, we'll see if Gunther makes it and he signed his entry level contract. You know, I wouldn't rush him. Play him in the AHL. Play him when he needs to be. be. He was in the OHL last year. Wherever he needs to go next, I'm not sure. We'll see what happens. Phil Kessel could be a trade deadline you know, bait heel for them to trade him. Get picks, like I keep saying, get those picks. Uh, Phil Kessel could be a guy you can get picks for. You might have to retain the salary, 50%. Who cares? Do that. Do what you need to. Um, but Phil Kessel actually has two years left. You want to trade him this year? Actually, it's one year. My bad. I did not know that. I thought he had two. Next, this uh, season, this is last year with the Coyotes, potentially. Which I will say so, right? So trade him. Absolutely at the deadline. Trade him. Get the picks. It would definitely be a guy out there at the deadline. A top player. Uh, we'll see how he does for sure. Um, Fischl. You know, he had one really good year. He hasn't got back to that. We'll see how he does. The Zingle. Sign a free agency and he's going to get the time he wants. He can play all he wants. He really can. He gets all the minutes he wants to play. Great. Take all the minutes you need, right? Uh, Louis Erickson's out there, a fresh start, but, you know, six million for one year left, whatever, right? Uh, Blake Spears, a guy that I was hoping, you know, he has some, you know, upside, but never really have gotten to it. You know, he's 23, 24, he's got to start doing it now. Some pressure on him, but, you know, not much, you know, people don't really know who he is. Dylan Gunther, like I said, just take your time with him, for sure. 
Look on defense, you have Jacob Kitchen. He's your number one defenseman. Don't trade him because he's extremely valuable. He should be a for he should be a next captain of the Coyotes eventually. Maybe not this year. Years to come. Seasons to come. Two or three if you have to, but he should be a next captain. He's on a long term deal. He should be a guy that goes through this whole rebuild and becomes great with this team. Because this team's gonna be solid in the future for sure. Also the um Panthers gave uh, the Coyotes, Anton Strawman, picks again. What I mean, adding that, you know, all right, I'll take on the $5 million buck contract, get picks again. So that's good to see that. Same thing with Gosses Bale. People were saying, actually the Coyotes had the cheapest offer out of other teams. Uh, some teams were saying, all right, Philadelphia, we'll take your 16th overall pick of this year, 2021, to take off. Gus is bail from your hands. Who knows who that was? Maybe it was Seattle or someone. But the Flyers are like, we're not doing that. Of course, it went to the Sabres for Risto there. Uh, Risto Linen. So, so uh, the Coyotes got a second, third round pick. Which, you know, look at that. And maybe you can get Gosses Bale back on track. Fresh start. Absolutely. See how that goes. Luke Biskin there. He's another guy. He's not top four, but he's going to get the time in the world. You know, Golagoski's not here. Nicholas Jolison's not there anymore. They're gone. So there's tons of time on that defense for sure. And you have Kappa Binnaco, who's a puck moving guy. This year, I hope he can really grow even more. I want to see more from him. Um, he definitely needs to start showing that. He's 23-24. It's time to start showing that. Connor Tillman's there. It's a guy who, you know, if he plays well, he's going to get time. Um, what is he, 20-21? I think he's 22, something like that. Um, thing off my top of my head for that. But Timmons was the one with the first round pick in Kempel going to the Avalanche. But Timmons, right shot guy. Why not? Interesting prospect. Take your time with him, develop him for sure. Same thing with Cam Deem and Soderstrom. I keep saying develop, but that's exactly what we're in the stage of developing these young players because you don't want most of them become bust. You don't want that. You really want to take your time because there's no rush. Really isn't whatsoever. With the goalies, there's no rush here too. All positions, right? Carter Hutton, the Coyotes signed him to a one-year deal. Koshnall, they also got from the um, the Sharks, which, what they receive, I forgot what they, well, Hill went to the Sharks for like a third-round pick or second-third. Or was it third and fourth? I don't know. Or a third round pick. I, I don't remember what they said. Or was it just a second? So now I'm guessing. But I know something before the Kraken uh, did their expansion draft. Let's see. It's been a while since this happened. But uh, let's see the trade. Here we go. Close on a second round pick in 2022. That's right. Okay. So, you get a second round pick, another pick. You know what I mean? So, absolutely fantastic. And you have Pushev there, whatever you say that name, that Russian goalie there. He's going to have a chance to, you know, Carl Hutton. He's not going to, you know, he has eye problems at times. He has that eye surgery too. So, you know, when you hear that, you're like, oh no, he's going to be able to track the puck correctly. That whole thing. But I definitely think Pushev there will get. A chance to play. Uh, let's look at the Coyotes and the picks, and then we'll get into the prediction, and then we should be all set. But um, they have tons of first round picks and second round picks, right? Uh, three first round picks, like I said, their own. The Coyotes and potentially Montreal or Carolina, looking like Montreal at this moment, right? Second round pick. The own, the Islanders, the Flyers, the Sharks, and the Canucks. So that is five second round picks. Can you convert some of those second round picks into first round pick? Maybe make a first round pick out of that if you want to. Um, we'll see what happens. But that's a lot. You're going to get a lot of prospects next year from the Coyotes deal. Absolutely. There's their own third round pick, their own fourth round pick. Own fifth round pick, the own sixth round pick, and they do not have the own second round or seventh round pick. Um, that was traded in the um, Aiden Hill thing. Who cares about seventh round? But who, you know, 
Sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, the odds are against 7th round pick. But still, 7th round picks do turn out to sometimes be some great players. We know that for sure. Absolutely. So, let's get into the prediction now. I think this is the easy one. But, um, I think we have to say 8th in the central, right? And this is where the Coyotes want to be. They should be in the 8th and the Central. Get the best possibility to get Shane right on your hands. Get that settlement. Get that guy you need down the middle. Build around him. Um, absolutely. Kitcher in a heel like 23. You know, he's a young defenseman. Build this team. Uh, get that center, which they've been lacking for years for that offense. They always had good defense, but they need that offense. Right? So... 8th and Central would be perfect for them. And the Coyotes, I mean, the um, Avalanche for some pick should be top 20, top 25, I should say. So it'd be around 25th, later, maybe, right? Uh, Montreal's, maybe a top 15 pick. Maybe late 15, 16, 17. Um, either Carolina or Montreal it should probably be Montreal, because Carolina will probably finish higher than them, potentially present trophy winners, right? So uh, we'll see what happens. But um, that Montreal pick can be from 15 to 20, or maybe a little bit less than 15. Who knows how the season goes? So that you know, what I mean, so you have some good picks there for sure. Basically, two high picks, Coyotes and Montreal, right? So. Um, this team's a rebuilding team. We'll see how this goes. But it looks pretty good for the Coyotes. Not right now, but in the future it will look good. And just build those prospects, like I keep saying. Get those prospects. Take your time. Be patient. And then you have a good team. Absolutely. This team's going to be stacked in the future, which Arizona needs that. They don't have that. They have never had that in a while. 2014 was the last time they got to the Eastern Conference Finals. And, you know, after that, you know, you had Shane Doan, you had Vermette, and you had Hansel, but you need a little bit more, you know, I know Doan was great, but you could use another offensive guy, you know? You just don't have that, but this team, Bill Armstrong, has done a terrific job with conditions of the first-round picks and second-round picks and all that stuff. He'll do a good job. He really will, for sure. We'll see what happens, but um, this team should be stacked, and getting these bad contracts for picks... Will benefit the Coyotes in the long run for sure. So thank you for watching. And it's Chuck News Sports, and I will see you next video. Bye.